Hi there, it's Ranj. I'm going to show you a full length video from inside a premium CRP5 course that I have just recently released on my website atplapproach.com. If you act quickly, you'll be in luck. Currently for a short time, there is an opening sale where the course is 75% off for those who use the discount code YouTube75OFF. All capital letters, no spaces. Take a look at this video's description down below to see the steps on how to use the code. Before I show you the full length video, let me introduce you to myself and the ultimate flight computer course. I have seven years tutoring experience teaching maths and physics based subjects to ATPL cadets as well as GCSE and A level students. I was on the EasyJet MPL where halfway through my training, unfortunately, I lost my medical and would never be able to get it back. This was a very dark moment. However, I also found this as an opportunity to bring my passion for aviation and teaching together with what I'm offering you today. By the end of this course, you'll know exactly what to do for each question that shows in your exams. You'll learn tips and tricks that other flight schools do not teach. And you'll also gain a greater understanding of subjects such as general navigation, aircraft general knowledge, and mass and balance, etc. I made this course for those who want to become a professional pilot. It will teach you from the ground up using the proper methods and techniques required in the examinations, not the ones which are sometimes taught in order to cut corners. Indicated airspeed, specific gravity, density altitude, compressibility correction. These might sound daunting, but don't be scared off. In order to bring this theory together with the CRP5, I have created extra resources in order to teach this theory effectively. I will show you helpful tips in order to use the scientific calculator effectively to make the exams a lot easier and will also be giving you access to flowchart which can solve any PPL to ADPL flight computer related question. Together we will go through past exam questions which have also showed in the question banks where you will be led through them step by step. The ideal student for this course would be a cadet studying for their PPL, CPL or ATPL who wants to stop solely relying on feedback and the sometimes incorrect explanations that the question banks put out there. The only requirements for this course would be to have a CRP5, a scientific calculator, and also the willingness to learn. Please take a look at the more detailed course description, and I look forward to seeing you inside. So if you like the sound of that, head over to atplapproach.com and follow the steps in this video's description down below to use the 75% off discount code for the course. You can see that the website says one month off, but that's just an error from the website host. The course cost is only a one-time fee and you'll have access to it for life. Now, let's take a look at the full length video, which features parts of one of the flowcharts within the course. Okay, for the next example, we're going to work out our heading. This is a bit trickier because we have to go over the idea of iteration. However, I'm now going to introduce my flowchart, which will make it a lot easier and can solve any ATPL or PPL pooley related question. Here we have another question from the banks. With a track of 188 degrees, wind of 260 degrees at 90 knots, and a TAS of 420 knots, what is our heading and ground speed? So here's my beautiful flowchart. It can solve any wind side ATPL or PPL question. I am going to reveal it slowly so it's not so scary and is easier to digest. So we start at the top here and then get to the first process, which tells us to convert bearings to the reference of our answer. What that means is if our multiple choice answers were in terms of magnetic north and we had things given to us in terms of true north, we should then convert what we are given to magnetic north or else we're going to forget or even be tricked by the answers. I will go over this certain trick later on in the course. Right, now after that ramble, we now come to this decision block, which asks if we have two of the heading, drift or track. We also have this statement here saying that drift is the negative of the wind correction angle. So if we had a drift of six degrees right, our wind correction angle will be negative six degrees right, which is six degrees left. The idea behind it is that you need to have a heading which corrects for the wind 
in order to fly where you want to go. Coming back to this decision here, if we have two of those, it becomes really easy and we can always work out the last. We don't have it easy though, so we come onto this next process here, which tells us to figure out which side of the wind slide to use. We have a TAS greater than 300 knots, so we will use the high side. Unfortunately, we are on the low end of the high side, so we'll need to be very accurate. Whenever we're on the low side of either side, just above the speed arc here at 300 knots on the high side, and here of 100 knots on the low side, you can see the drift lines become very close together, which means we need to plot very accurately or else we'll be quite off, especially if the given multiple choice answers are very close together. Taking a look at our answers, we are very lucky because they are all very distinguishable from each other with ground speeds far apart. Okay, now like I said in my last video, we always plot the wind first if it is given. This is the same as before, so we face the wind by putting the direction of 260 degrees underneath it. There we go, let's put underneath our index here. And then we put the datum on a nice number. I'm going to choose 500 there. And then we subtract the wind strength of 90 knots and plot there. I recommend doing this always as a dot, not a cross. And <laughs> my pen cap just flew off. Um, yeah, I'm using the whiteboard marker and not using the um, permanent marker because this is my nice new pulley. All right. So 500 take away 90 gives us 410, which is that. And we can see it's nice and clear. The next thing we are asked is if we are given the TAS. We are, so I will now put the datum on the TAS of 420 knots. There we go. Now we are asked if we have the heading. We do not, because that's what we want to find out. This is a key point in the flowchart where we go off and do different methods based on if we are given the track or heading. I mean, we must have one of them at least, so we have some sort of idea where we are going. As we don't have the heading, we go down here to this statement, which tells us that we must have the track. Okay. Now we put the track of 188 degrees under the index. There we go. It says heading on my pulley here and does not say track. Because of this, the flight computer is now incorrectly set up. Whenever you put the track on the index, I want you to feel a bit sick inside. And remember that that is incorrect. But we still do it because we have to guess where our heading is and the track is a pretty good guess because it has to be within 50 degrees of it. Well, I got that from taking a look at this and we can see, well, the drift on either side goes up to 50 degrees. We're never really going to get drifts that big. They're probably only going to be max 15 to 20 degrees. Very rare to get questions with big drifts. All right, seeing if I can put it back in here. And it's nice and lined up. Oh, no one, the 188 under the true heading. There we go. And the datum on the 420. The next statement says, if we don't have the TAS, we have to put the wind dot on our ground speed. We have the TAS, so can ignore it. One second, let's pause the video right here. Just before I show you the rest of the flowcharts path with this question, I'd like to remind you of the 75% off discount code YouTube75OFF, which is for the CRP5 course that has many of these types of videos. Don't miss out on the opening sale. Take a look at this video's description down below and follow the steps to get this great bargain. Okay, now back to the video. This decision here asks if the track is on the plotted drift 
or if the question is asking for the win component. And because we have just put our track on the index, it is not on our drift, unless we have a drift of zero degrees. So now we start the process of iteration. Iteration is where you put your output back in as an input. And we keep doing this until we get close enough to our answer. This is shown by this loop here. Just like how our track is our estimate for our heading, our ground speed and drift are also not going to be completely correct. We therefore expect them to change. We now do what the process says and put our track of 188 degrees underneath what the plotted drift right now is telling us. It tells us it's 12 and a half degrees. So I will line the 188 with the 12 and a half degrees. This is to the left, so we'll do it to the left. And this is going to be quite difficult, so I'm just going to bring my pulley a bit closer. I'll move the 190 under the 10, and then we'll move half a division anti-clockwise. So it's nice and lined up. There we go. Now we can see that putting our track as an estimated heading of 188 degrees has given us 200.5 degrees as a new estimated heading. We follow the line back to this decision and then check again. Is the track on the plotted drift? We had our track of 188 degrees lined up with 12.5. However, the wind dot is now saying 12 degrees. We are close and this is probably good enough, but let's do it once more for practice. So what we do is do this process again. We put our track of 188 degrees on what the plotted drift is saying. It's saying 12, so I'm going to move it, put the 188 on the 12. There we go. I did it the wrong way first, but we all make mistakes. We now follow the line back, and it also says 12 degrees. So we've got the 188 with the 12 degrees lined up there. And we also have the wind dot saying 12 degrees. So now we don't need to make any more adjustments and the flight computer is completely set up correctly. We have the datum on the TAS and the track on the correct drift. We can now just read off the remaining values. However, I will show you the path that this flowchart takes just in case you get stuck. As you can see, it goes past the wind component which we don't need, and also we don't need the wind as we had it from the start. Then we get to this statement here, which tells us to ensure the heading is under the index and the wind dot is on the drift and ground speed. So we take a look and see that our track isn't on the index, it's our heading, and our wind dot is on 12 degrees, which is also what the track on the inner scale lines up with. We now arrive to the end where we can read it all off. Our heading is 200 degrees and using the speed ox, we go from 350, 360, 370, 380, and it's just about halfway between 380 and 390. So I would say 385 knots. The answer in the question says 383 knots, but we're close enough. I mean, if you take a look at the wind dot here, it's fat enough where it's covering almost 10 knots. So it's really hard to say. So where we place the center of it is important. So we don't just look at the top or the bottom of the wind dot. We need to be looking at the center and where that lines up with. Going back to the flow chart, it's good because when you go along it, you can see what other types of questions you will come across when going along that same path. We went past things like wind components and whether we actually needed to find the wind. 
which helps us distinguish between are we going down the right or wrong path. I hope you learned something from that video. There will be plenty more to learn with the all-encompassing CRP5 course that it's within. So don't delay, head over to the website atplapproach.com and use that discount code YouTube75OFF. You can see that the website says one month off, but that's just an error from the website host. The course cost is only a one-time fee and you'll have access to it for life. Thanks and see you soon.